Australia's armored forces are entering a turning point. The Redback Infantry Fighting Vehicle, developed by South Korea's Hanwha Defense, has officially moved from prototype status to final testing in Australia, a step that defines the nation's modernization of its land forces under the Land 400 Phase 3 program. The Redback is not merely a replacement for the M113, it is a complete redefinition of how Australia's army will move, fight, and sustain itself in the 2030s. The selection of the Redback, finalized in 2023 and now taking physical form in 2025, reflects a deliberate shift in Australian defence strategy. The Defence Strategic Review cut the program size from 450 to 129 vehicles, but the intent is clear. Focus on quality, integration, and industrial sovereignty. The vehicles are being assembled at Hanwha's Armoured Vehicle, Center of Excellence in Geelong, Victoria, a facility designed not just for production, but as a long-term industrial base for Australian armoured capability. According to the latest updates, several prototype Redbacks have already arrived in-country for operational testing at the Pukapunyal Training Area, marking the transition from contract to capability. The industrial ecosystem around the Redback is expanding. Hanwha has signed a major contract with Penske Australia to produce and supply 129 MTU diesel engines under local assembly ensuring that propulsion technology is maintained within Australian borders. Electro-Optic Systems of Canberra has secured a 108 million AUD deal to provide the remote weapon station for the Redback fleet, bringing local innovation to the vehicle sensor and fire control network. These two contracts alone represent the core of Australia's industrialization plan, domestic assembly, domestic integration, and a steady buildup of skilled manufacturing jobs. At Pukapunyal, the Redback's trials are pushing beyond simple mobility runs. Australian and Hanwha engineers have tested cross-country endurance, slope climbing performance, and firing accuracy using the 30mm Bushmaster cannon. The vehicle's dual Spike LR2 anti-tank missile launchers have been evaluated for range, stabilization, and target acquisition, while the Iron Fist Active Protection System underwent preliminary testing against simulated rocket-propelled grenade threats. The results show that Redback meets or exceeds the performance benchmarks for next-generation IFVs, combining strong armor protection with advanced defensive systems that rival Western European designs. In terms of weaponry, the Redback offers a versatile mix of offensive and defensive tools. Its primary armament, the 30mm Bushmaster, can engage both light-armored vehicles and low-flying drones. The Spike LR2 missiles add long-range anti-armor capability up to 5.5 kilometers, a drastic improvement over the M113's limited self-defense options. The Iron Fist APS, supplied by Elbit Systems, is capable of intercepting incoming projectiles using kinetic countermeasures, providing a last layer of survivability against modern ATGMs. The RWS from EOS integrates electro-optical sensors, allowing the crew to engage soft targets and drones without exposing themselves. Together, these systems make Redback one of the most heavily protected IFVs in the region. But the Redback is more than an armored box with guns. Its design philosophy revolves around integration into a networked battlefield. Through digital battle management systems, it can exchange targeting and reconnaissance data with artillery units, UAVs, and HIMARS launchers. Within a combined arms brigade, Redback functions as the central node linking mobility, firepower, and intelligence. The Australian Army's future doctrine, rapid maneuver supported by long-range precision strikes, relies on vehicles like Redback to serve as both sensor and shooter. Tests at Pukapunyal have already simulated joint operations with AS-9 Huntsman self-propelled howitzers 
underscoring this emerging concept of network warfare. The industrial implications are just as strategic as the military ones. Hanwha's Geelong plant is generating local jobs and nurturing a supply chain that extends into Australian SMEs producing armor, electronics, and support equipment. The Penske engine deal reinforces an enduring maintenance ecosystem, while the EOS RWS contract ensures a local technological footprint in advanced weapon integration. These arrangements mean Australia can maintain, upgrade, and potentially export similar systems without total dependence on foreign logistics. However, with only 129 vehicles ordered, the long-term viability of the HACE facility depends on follow-on orders or exports to allies. Without sustained production, Australia risks a boom-bust industrial cycle. The Redback program also faces significant challenges. The reduction in fleet size means that training and doctrine must be reimagined around a smaller, more elite mechanized force. Maintaining supply chain continuity between Korean, Israeli, and Australian contractors adds complexity, particularly with the sensitive export regimes of each country. Training crews to operate automated diagnostics, APS systems, and data-linked weapon networks requires a new skill set not previously common in the Australian Army. Every new technology introduces new vulnerabilities, from electronic warfare interference to maintenance dependencies. Yet these obstacles do not diminish the Redback's strategic importance. Australia's defense planning increasingly emphasizes self-reliance within alliance meaning the nation must be capable of sustaining operations even if allies are distracted elsewhere. The Redback, produced domestically and maintained by Australian engineers, fits directly into that framework. In a crisis across the Indo-Pacific, from disaster relief to coalition deterrence, the Redback's speed, firepower, and protection allow the Army to deploy effectively without waiting for Allied reinforcement. By 2030, when the first battalion-sized contingent is expected to be fully operational, the Redback will anchor a new generation of combined arms tactics. Paired with HIMARS rocket artillery and the AS-9 Huntsman howitzer, the IFV becomes part of a triangle of mobility, long-range strike, and armored resilience. This synergy transforms the Australian Army from a force designed for peacekeeping and low-intensity conflict into one capable of peer-level combined operations. For regional observers, it signals Australia's determination to field credible ground combat power to complement its naval and air modernization programs. Strategically, the Redback's success will determine whether Australia can balance ambition with realism. The decision to build domestically brings long-term rewards but short-term complexity. Delays or underperformance could undermine confidence in local manufacturing. Success, on the other hand, will prove that Australia's defense industrial base can deliver advanced systems on time and on budget. In an era where regional security is defined by speed and adaptability, that capability may be as important as the IFV itself. The Redback's trials represent more than just engineering validation. They are a test of Australia's ability to modernize intelligently, combining imported technology, local production, and regional strategy. The vehicle's arrival on Australian soil confirms that this transformation is already underway. Whether it becomes the true backbone of the Army's mechanized forces will depend on discipline, consistency, and continued investment. If you want to see how the Redback, HIMARS, and AS-9 Huntsman could operate together in a combined arms scenario across the Indo-Pacific, make sure to subscribe and comment below. The age of Australia's new land warfare capability has begun, and the Redback is leading the charge.